How Daddy Played Ping Pong by Alexander Raskin When Daddy was a little schoolboy, a new game was invented. It was called Ping Pong. Nowadays, lots of children play Ping Pong. But in those days, Ping Pong was all the rage. It was played from morning till night in every school and courtyard, on tables, benches, grand pianos and on the floor. Some even played at night. Many kids forgot that anything else existed except ping pong. There were ping pong matches in little daddy's school every single day. Every class played each other to determine the school champion. Then they played each other and the winner became the district champion. Then there was a city tournament when Moscow and Leningrad played each other. Little daddy was amazed. He just couldn't understand why it was so interesting to keep bouncing a little white ball back and forth with little paddles. Why don't you try it? One of his friends would say. It's no fun. It sure is. No, it isn't. Just try it once. I don't want to. This conversation was repeated several times. Naturally, one bright day, little daddy got a ping pong paddle and took his place at one side of the table. And that was the end of him. I say, one bright day. But little daddy's parents considered it to be one of the darkest days of their lives. And all because little daddy became fascinated by ping pong. In the beginning, he couldn't manage to hit the ball. When he finally learned to hit the ball, it wouldn't bounce on the table. At last, when little daddy managed to hit the ball, and it bounced across the table, he took a real interest in the game. He discovered that there were different ways of hitting the ball. You could chop it or send it into a spin, off to one of the corners. A good player could make the ball bounce on the part of his opponent's side of the table that was the hardest to reach. Daddy still thinks ping pong is a wonderful game. But then little daddy thought it was the most fascinating game in the world. He gave up reading. He stopped doing his homework. The only reason he went to school at all was to play his favorite game. He began playing better and better, but his marks kept getting worse and worse. The teacher took him aside and talked to him several times. She explained that there was a limit to everything. She even reminded him of the saying, there's a time for everything. Little daddy didn't argue because it was no use. But could he make her understand that ping pong was the work of his life while everything else was play? He became so good at the game that he could beat many of his friends. The day he beat the school's third best player, his teacher said, I want to speak to your parents. Things cannot continue as they are now. She wrote a letter to grandpa and grandma which they never received because little daddy pulled it out of the mailbox, read it and tore it up. It was so awful that he tore it up into tiny bits. His teacher sent his parents another letter. It was still worse than the first one. So little daddy tore it into still tinier bits. I am ashamed to say so, but that's exactly what happened. Little daddy's teacher was very surprised. For grandpa and grandma never came to see her. Just as she was about to write them a third letter, little daddy beat the school champion at ping pong. After that, he decided there was no use going to school anymore and so he didn't. Every morning, he'd make believe that he was going to school. But there were no notebooks or textbooks in his school bag. Instead, there were two ping pong paddles, a net and three balls and a sandwich, which was little daddy's lunch. All day long, he played ping pong. Little daddy had many new friends all of whom were equally crazy about ping-pong. He knew every Moscow champion by sight. The famous Falkevich brothers greeted him as an equal. He became a member of the junior team. He'd already lost his first real game. He, at this point his teacher having received no answer to her letters and missing little daddy in class, went to see him. Little daddy was not at home. Grandma and grandpa were, though. When they discovered their son had been playing hooky and was spending his days slamming a little white ball around, they were thunderstruck. They decided that little daddy was out of his mind. After all, they'd never played ping pong. They hid his paddles and balls 
and took little daddy to a doctor. This was no plain ordinary doctor. This was a professor who'd spent his life treating crazy people. However, he'd never played ping pong. He simply couldn't understand why little daddy had to play hooky on account of this game called ping pong. Little daddy couldn't understand why the professor was asking him such stupid questions. Do the boys hit you in school? Do you sleep well? Do you have headaches in the morning? Do you have headaches in the evening? Are you afraid of the dark? Have you ever had fits? Have you ever been unconscious? Naturally, little daddy said no to every one of them. Then the professor continued, Do you like your school? Do you like your teacher? Do you have friends in school? Boys? Girls? And now little daddy said yes to every question. Is there a girl you like better than the rest? The professor asked. This made little daddy mad. Why do you keep asking me all these questions? I was playing hooky so I could play ping pong. And your questions have nothing to do with anything. All right, the professor said. What do you intend to do now? Play ping pong, little daddy replied. Do you know how this might all end? Have you ever thought of the future? Sure, little daddy said. Our team might win the Moscow tournament. I'm serious, this professor snapped. So am I, said little daddy. Then the professor shrugged. He put some drops into a glass of water and said, Here, drink this, to little daddy. I don't want to, said little daddy. I'm not sick. But I am, said the professor and drank the medicine himself. Then he added in a whisper, if I talk your parents into letting you play through the season, do you promise you'll go back to school in September? Yes, said little daddy. Then the professor summoned grandpa and grandma. He said, The boy is absolutely sane. Let him play ping pong. He's missed most of the term anyway. And he took some more medicine. And so little daddy and his parents went home. Little daddy's team didn't win the tournament, but it did take second place. And daddy still insists that the year was not wasted. He realized that ping pong wasn't the most important thing in the world. He even began to miss his school. He went back the following September and eventually graduated. Many years passed. His old paddle is still on the top shelf of the cupboard. Grandpa and grandma still shudder at the sight of it. But daddy looks at it fondly. It was certainly silly to drop out of school because of ping pong. Everybody smiles when they hear this story. So does daddy. And yet, ping pong is a very good game. I'll write about it someday. But when daddy saw that his daughter had taken an interest in ping pong, he became very worried. However, he was relieved to see that she wasn't going to drop out of school on account of it, though she did become the school champion. That's when daddy finally understood how grandpa and grandma had felt and he hid his old paddle in a far corner of the cupboard. But he takes it out sometimes and recalls his ping-pong days.